Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Alana Perez, the CGI nerd. And in this video, we're going to be creating a uh, ball that moves around kind of like a character. It's physics-based movement for our scene. Um, we'll be able to control it going side to side on these platformers and to be able to jump up a little bit. So let's take a look at doing that now. So I'm going to start off by creating a new blueprint. The blueprint is going to be a pawn. The pawn is something that we can possess and uh, use as a character. So we're going to say my ball BP. I'm going to go into it. And this is what we have so far. There's nothing here. So we need to create a sphere. I'm going to make it look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to just put um, burnished steel. I have the starter content uh, here, but it's a simple scene right now with some boxes. That's all I've done. I can throw it over here, bring it up. There we go. So we have a ball. If we push play now, we can roam around like our camera like normal this is a static object right now so it will not be like we can collide with it but that's about it so I can hit it but I can't move it or do anything okay so let's take a look at the actually I got it a little bit too oh, there I want it right on top of the ground okay let's look at here um, I want it to be able to be connected, the camera be connected to this, and I don't want to run into it or anything. So I am going to add a spring arm here. And then inside of the spring arm, we're going to create a camera. There we go. So in the spring arm here, if we look at this scene, the thing that we're going to want to adjust is the distance away from the camera so we can put it a bit further away so we can see more of the environment. Also I'm going to um, adjust the offset to be a little bit higher on the X and then I can select the camera itself and pitch it a little bit so that way we are looking at the ball. So if I were to push play we still don't get to possess it. Um, it shows it there. Um, we do see the camera in the scene. If we click on it, we can see the angle. That angle looks okay for what I want to do, um, but it's not doing anything yet. So let's make sure that when we start the game, we actually go to this camera and that we can access it. So what we want to do is go to the default scene route. And now that we have that, um, we have a attribute. Let's just type in here a UTO. Uh, oh, okay. I am selecting the wrong thing. So the ball, the sphere here, let's move it up into the scene route. That's what we want to ma manipulate. Here is what I actually want to click is the my ball BP self. Now over here we should see the attribute that we're looking for. Da, 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 da. Auto receive input. It's like called auto possess or something like that. A U T O. There we go. Auto possess player. So we're going to set this to zero so that way we can possess that. Okay, and then we can push play. Now we can see that we jump over into that camera right now. If I try to um, move or jump or do anything, it won't do anything because we haven't told it what to do yet. So that looks good. We have that done. Now we want to set some movement on it and it's going to be in the settings here. 
we're gonna go to project settings and let's scroll down to where it says input and the input here under access mapping let's say move side to side that's going to be the name of the axis that I'm going to control. And this basically lets me save key commands that will be able to control this. Um, so I want it to move one way. It's going to be D. So we're going to use the key, D key to move it one way. Then I can click the plus and then I'm going to use the A key to move the other way. Um, except that we're going to change this to be a negative one instead of a positive one. So that allows us to get um, positive direction input and negative direction input with each one of these. Okay, so I have that set now. I can close this out for now. Later on, we'll add the jump in here. And then still when we play it, it won't do anything because we still haven't told it what to do with that. So what do we want to do? We want to go into the event graph for our ball. And I'm just going to get rid of everything. Don't need any of those right now. Um, move side to side. So we have the axis event. Going to click on that and we should get the values. And then I'm going to connect this to add uh, physics input. So it's going to be the um, degrees. So it's going to be angular impulse in degrees. We can connect that. Okay, so we want to connect this value into the impulse here, and let's put it into the, let's split this, and we're gonna put it into the impulse x. But we need a multiplier because this isn't enough, this is only like an impulse of one. Uh, we can test this, and um, also we need to velocity change, have that activated. Okay, and now if we push play, we should see something, hopefully, it might be too small of a increment. Oh, nope, I haven't turned on physics. So let's turn on physics on the ball. So we have the sphere here. And simulate physics, we have to turn that on. Okay, let's compile that there. And then push play. And you can see that I am spinning it, but it's spinning everything with it. So there's a few things that we're going to have to update. But we can see it's moving. It's moving slow. And it's spinning everything with it. Okay, escaping out of there. Okay, so I have that now. Let's start fixing some of those things. So. Uh, let's fix the camera first with the spring arm camera here. If we select that, there is an attribute that we want to enable. Um, let's see. Use pawn control rotation. Let's try that and compile. And then let's push play. And now we can see that it moves, but it's not rotating the camera at all in crazy weird directions. Okay, so that works. Um, there is another issue that I am having, is that if I go to the project settings and go into the inputs, um, when I'm pushing D, it's going uh, the opposite direction of it where I want it to go right it actually goes left so all we have to do is switch this to a negative one and then this will be a positive one okay and I, I'm going to test this really quick now the direction that I'm pushing the key is the direction that I want it to move in so that's perfect 
Um, right now, it's say that it's moving really, really slow. So we want to update that and make it be a little bit faster. So I'm going to call this um, movement speed. Let's change this to a float. Oops. A float. And drag that over here. Get movement speed. There we go. We have movement speed. Now we want to take this value and multiply it by this value. We can compile this so that way we can set a movement speed here. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, 10. Let's do it at 100. Let's try 100 first. Then we can go to a float uh, times float. So we're going to take uh, this value and multiply it by this value, and then add it into the impulse. And let's see how that goes now. Let's play. Now it is definitely spinning very fast, probably too fast for what we need. So let's go back in the blueprint and we can adjust the movement speed here. We're gonna put it at like, let's say 15. Compile, play. And that feels a little bit better. I can control it. I can go over the other side and it's physics based. So it's adding some momentum as we go through and it takes, the faster you're going, the longer it takes to go the opposite direction. So that gives us the, the movement and its physics space. We don't have any jumping ability right now. So let's add another key command here in the inputs. I'm going to add another axis mapping. And this is going to be the space bar. And up to one is fine. Now let's go back into the blueprint. I'm going to right click. Oh, I didn't give it a name, I don't think. Let's go back to the settings. Input over here. Let's name this jump. Go back into the blueprints. Right click and search for jump. Oops, I don't want to get jump. I want the event jump and make sure that I select the event. There we go. And then we're going to add another impulse. And um, we're just going to add impulse. So that way we can do a direction. And then I'm going to say we create another variable. Call this jump height integer. There we go. Let's split this. And then I want to uh, input the value into the Z. Obviously, this is going to be too low. I'm going to check box the velocity change. Uh, and then need to make sure that we're using a float. There we go. Throw that in here, get that value, and then we're going to multiply it the same way we have it here. So I just control C, control V to get that. Multiply these values together, and then that goes into the Z. So here in the jump, we have the values. We just need to compile it so that way we can get the default value. And let's do like 100 and see how that works. So if I push play right now, we should still be able to move side to side. And then if I push spacebar, he jumps. So if I hold down the spacebar, this is where we have a little bit of the issue is that it had so much velocity that it went super high because it's constantly looking at the input and adding more and more velocity.
so we want it to be able to add some velocity but we don't want it to go too crazy so when we look at it maybe that's too much maybe something like about there we want so um what we need to do is basically tell it that once it's in the air you can't jump again so let's create another variable this time it is going to be a boolean and we're gonna say this boolean is can jump so we're asking can we jump did i drag the wrong one let's see set can jump here we go so after we jump, we tell it, no, no, you can't. Oh, sorry, we need it off. No, no, you can't jump. Um, let's compile and set the default value for this. And by default, yes, yes, you can jump. Okay, so let's compile this and test this. And we're gonna have a very obvious issue right now. So we can jump, that's great. Oh, it's still getting input, so let me check. So by default, yes, you can jump. Oh, because we haven't set a condition. We need to set a condition. Um, branch. We need to create a branch. And that goes over here. And then if true, we go over here. So what are we checking? We are checking, can you jump? Get can jump. Connect it there. So can we jump? If we can, yes, go over here. If not, do something else. Okay, so let's play this again. Now, if I push spacebar, it doesn't look like we are jumping at all. Because it happens instantly, we need a higher value in our jump height. But as soon as it leaves the ground, it can't do anything. So let's make this maybe 500 compile it's going to get an instant impulse it needs to be even higher Hopefully that will trigger a jump of some sort. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. There we go. Okay, so we need an even higher value. Which seems a little weird to me. The default can jump is true. Great. Okay, so something is up now. Let me double check this blueprint. I have velocity change. Let me set it to can't jump over here. That is weird. Okay, well, let's work on the hitbox part and uh, maybe that will fix it. So um, we need to basically turn it back on. It might be that it immediately turns off. So I want to create a hit um, object so that way when it knows when it's touching the ground. So let's say hit event, event hit. There we go. Um, so then over here with the can jump, we set can jump to true. So if it's touching the ground, it turns it back on. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay. Okay. 
So now the logic should be um, good. Let's see. Let's check the sphere over here. Oh, we need to make sure that we um, simulation generate hit event. If we turn that on, we need that in order for it to calculate. So in order to calculate to see if it's hit anything. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, that worked. We launched it super high. Okay. <laughs> so now we just need to go to the jump height and set it to something reasonable. Let's try 500. Compile. Play. So there we go. We're jumping up. If I try to jump multiple times, it's not letting it jump until it hits something. Um, cool thing is that if we hit a wall, we should be able to um, jump again. So if we go, let me try to get in a good enough speed so that I can come towards it. I can jump, jump. Whoa, that was interesting. Didn't see that coming. So. <laughs> If you touch right here on the wall, you're constantly hitting something. So if I just tap it, we're fine. But if I hold it down. Oh, maybe I just glitched it for that second. There we go. So if we pinch ourselves in the corner, we are getting this instant. But if we jump, we're fine. It's only when we're in the corner here. That is so cool. Um, so it will work as long as we are not in a corner. Here you can see that I can get it there. Let me see if that happens on this corner here. So I pinched it. something about that corner let's try this corner over here shove it in the corner and jump yep but as soon as we're just slightly off of it then we're fine i was able to glitch it right off of if you time it just right when it hits the wall can get that super jump um <laughs> well that is an interesting like little development that i wasn't expecting to happen because it works until you're pinched where's it going where's it going is it gonna come back down boom Anyways, that is what I wanted to go through, um, despite the little glitch there where we have that because we can pinch it in the corners now, but you can wall jump basically, which is kind of interesting. If you time it just right, you should be able to get back onto higher platforms. Or you can go crazy high like that because you're getting an impulse super high value. I think that this would call for, let's stop this, a kind of contained level. Let's uh, copy this, paste it. And move this. Okay, so now that I have that, <laughs> we might jump all the way up if we get glitched there, but 
and we should be able to kind of go all the way up here if we time it just right position it just right but in either case we should hopefully be able to get like a double jump almost But you guys get the idea. It's a little bar. Might not be able to get it to go all the way up there. And I actually got rid of the second platform that I wanted. Just copy and paste that and then make it a little bit narrower. There we go. That's what I want. So that way. We can go here and test it out and be able to jump. It could be kind of like cool to just have maybe some um, like little obstacles so that way it makes sense that we need kind of a jump ability. Da -da -da. So I need smaller increments. Let's disable that for right now, just so that we can have a little bit more of that. But now, play, we should be able to jump over objects. Cool. Oh, that was cool. So I touched this top. But then it triggered a jump so I can run into the wall. This is almost like a wall climb. It's kind of cool. It's not consistent. That's the only part. You can kind of get it to hop you. you can see that's the jump thing that I was getting on the ceiling. There we go, we were able to get back up. So that was the wall jump on the opposite side, but it was kind of more of what I was expecting. Anyways, this is just me playing around with the little ball now. Um, yeah, that is essentially it for this one, where we have a ball that can move around and jump within a side scrolling platform style basically like with the jump because it's adding uh, more inertia more of an impulse each time you jump you should be able to get higher if you time it right Or if you're running along a wall. <laughs> so I guess the way we could do that is filter a um, type a tag on each one of these and be able to tell it, okay, this is a ground, this is a wall. And that way we can, when we are looking at hit events, we can um, filter it by the type so if it is a ground type then it will allow you to jump again but that is that all right see you guys in the next video bye